All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here are the imaginary numbers example problems. Now, imaginary numbers are extremely useful. First of all, it's very important to know that imaginary numbers are not actually fake. All right, that's the way we use that word imaginary in normal everyday English kind of messes up the way these things actually work. They are very much a real part of our world. And there was a huge debate back in the day over whether they should really be called imaginary since they are real. And it's, um, it's better to just start working with them. Um, but let me show you something that it will kind of whet your appetite for what we're going to learn. So when you learn about imaginary numbers, it seems like they don't mean anything or it's just some arcane topic that has no application. But in fact, they are extremely useful. For example, everything you see here, these are oscilloscope measurements. And uh, this is a, a science called interferometry, where you study interference patterns of different, um, different currents and voltages and signals of any kind. So you, you could be working with everything from radio astronomy um, at the National Radio Astronomical Observatory in New Mexico to you could be working with cable systems or internet, networking, telephonics, all kinds of different, every kind of electronics that you could think of will use imaginary numbers, okay? So you get to learn all about these awesome things, but first you have to start with the basics, and the basics are what we're going to cover here today. So let's go back and show the worksheet. So these are very useful. In fact, this is probably um, the most useful thing that you've learned all year. So let's, let's dive in. Now, this is called a complex number, and it consists of a real part and an imaginary part, okay? Well, it's very easy to plot these on a coordinate plane like this, where the horizontal axis is the real part and the vertical axis is the imaginary part. So very the way you do it is you look at this number. This is 2. This is the real part. So you could write like an R for real above it, and that would be 2 on the real axis, and then you... You just go up two on the imaginary axis, up one, up two, and that's where that point lives, right there. Okay? So you've just plotted that point, and this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. Okay? So now I'd like to show you something cool. So just plotting the point is easy enough, um, but what you should really learn how to do is to very quickly calculate this distance. This is called the modulus of the complex number, and it's basically just the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And you can construct a right triangle here, and you can see that it has two by two, so it's two across and two up, so the base is two and the height is two, and so you could very quickly, let's just draw that triangle down here, Okay, you have a right triangle, and you want to know C, the hypotenuse, but you're given A and B. So from this complex number, you get that A, the real part, is 2. A equals 2. And B, the imaginary part, that's like the height of the triangle. That equals 2. And this is actually a special right triangle, so we'll see something cool happen here in a second. So let's just go back to uh, Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And let's plug in what we have for A. That's 2 squared plus 2 for B squared equals C squared. Well, 2 squared is just 4, so that's 4 plus 4 equals c squared. So 4 plus 4 is 8, so that's 8 equals c squared. And then you take the square root of both sides, 
to get c by itself. All right. And so the square root of 8, 8 can be broken down into three twos. So that's really the square root of 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And this equals c. And then you say, well, okay, so 2 times 2 is really 2 squared. So we'll write 2 squared times 2. And we can break this square root apart like this. The square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2. Okay, and that's equal to c. Now the square root of anything squared is just that thing. So it's just 2 square root 2 equals c. Now this 2 square root 2, this is called the modulus. M-O-D-U-L-U-S. That's the modulus of 2 plus 2i. Okay, so the modulus of 2 plus 2i is 2 square root 2. And that is this distance. Okay, so it's like the magnitude of a vector right here. And it's 2 square root 2. So the special triangle relationship was 1, 1 square root 2, or 2, 2, 2 square root 2. Okay, so um, now that we know that, it's very interesting, isn't it? And so the next thing that you would learn for imaginary numbers is you would learn how to calculate what's called the argument or the angle of rotation right here. Now, if you were to put a protractor on this that has one of these armatures, and if you line everything up correctly, which may be harder than it looks, um, you'll notice that the angle of this line is at 45 degrees off the horizontal. I don't know if you can see that. 45 degrees off the horizontal. Okay? And so this has an angle of 45 degrees. 45 degrees. So... If you come down here, you can actually figure out what that is as an argument. And so you take 45 degrees and you multiply it by pi over 180 to turn it into what's called a radian measure. Okay, so pi over 180. And we can divide the top and the bottom by 5. Uh, 45 divided by 5 is 9. 180 divided by 5, let's see, 5 goes into 18 three times with... 3 is a remainder, and so it's 36, 9 pi over 36, and that can be reduced further. You just divide the top and the bottom by 9, you get 1 over 4. So it's this all reduces down to pi over 4 radians, okay? And pi over 4 radians is the angle of rotation. Okay, so what you would say is, and you can write imaginary numbers in something called polar form, and what you would write is, first you would write the modulus 2 square root 2, and then you'd put, <clears throat> and then you would put um, the angle, which is 45 degrees, Okay, and you can now, that's polar form, and you can write this in exponential form by writing 2 square root 2 e raised to the power of pi over 4 i. Okay, so this is called the exponential form of the imaginary number. And it takes into account both the magnitude of this vector and it takes into account the angle of rotation counterclockwise from the horizontal axis. So that was cool. Um, so there was a lot more to, there was a lot more going on than just plotting the points. But let's plot the points for number two. Uh, that's one minus three i. And so we separate these out. You can take one minus 3i, and you can kind of write a coordinate system that's 1, negative 3. 
So just by looking at this, you can say, all right, it's one comma negative three. That means it's positive on the horizontal and negative on the vertical, and that's gonna put you in quadrant four. So you're gonna go over one and down three right here, okay? And so we can do the same thing. We can draw that line right there and figure out what that hypotenuse is. Now I wanna bring something else into this. This isn't really a hypotenuse so much as it is the radius of a circle. And that circle has uh, this radius. And what we'll do is, let me plant this compass here, if I can, and then just rotate a circle all the way around, okay? I think that should have been oh, actually more in. Should have passed through three everywhere. See if we can get it better on the second try. There we go. Okay, so it's a it's a circle of radius three is what we're trying to get at. All right, so isn't that cool? So now we want to find out what this radius is. Okay, well we'll see we'll see what it is. Now the way you would figure it out is you would you would look at this triangle here. That's this triangle right here formed right here okay and so if you had to figure out the radius what you would do is you'd say well what's the base of the triangle it's a right triangle by the way so we can do this the base of the triangle is one and so that's the a value one one squared plus the height which is three one squared plus three squared equals c squared well, 1 squared is 1, and 3 squared is 9, and so that equals c squared. Okay? And so 1 plus 9 is 10, so what we really need is c squared equals the square root of 10. Now, the square root of 10 can't be reduced any further, and so you just have square root 10 equals c. Now, this is called the modulus, okay? So you can say mod of one minus three i, mod for modulus equals the square root of 10, okay? And now what you'd really like to know is, you'd like to know the complete angle of rotation starting from the horizontal, okay? and rotating counterclockwise all the way around to this point, which you can't see because my hand is blocking it. Okay, rotating all the way around the circle from the beginning all the way around to this point. How many degrees of rotation is that? Okay, well the way that you would figure it out is you actually need to think about the, um, the way that um, the way that angles are represented on a circle using something called radians. And so that starts at two pi, okay, or uh, four pi, uh, or uh, um, four, four pi over, um, well, let me, let me, let me just, it's four pi over two. And then you rotate 90 degrees to the left and you're at pi over two or one pi over two. You rotate 90 more degrees and you're at pi. Okay, then you rotate 90 more degrees. You're at so you've gone from zero to 90 degrees. You're at pi over two. 90 degrees to 180 degrees. You're at pi. You rotate again and you're at three pi over two, which is actually um, 270 degrees. And then you rotate back to 360 and you're at four pi over two, which reduces down to two pi. And so you can kind of play with this. Each one of these represents 90 degrees of rotation. So you've definitely got 270 degrees of rotation. So here's 90 plus 90 is 180 plus 90 is 270. And so what you would really like to know is um, if you were to be able to figure out this angle right here, what you would have is this arc okay and what you can do is once you get that arc 
you can subtract it from 360 if you're doing it with angles or if you're doing it with um, with radians, you can subtract it from 2 pi in order to get what you really want, which is either the, the radian or angular measure of this red arc, this whole thing here. Okay. And so this is called the argument of the complex number. And it's basically the, ang the uh, angular measure or the radian measure of the arc that goes counterclockwise from the horizontal axis all the way around to this point right here. And so how would you figure that out? Well, math gives us a very cool trick uh, called the arc tangent and what all the arc tangent means is this is one and this is three okay so what arc tangent says is it says give me the opposite over the adjacent opposite over adjacent and plug that into arc tangent and i'll give you the angle and so what that looks like if you're trying to find the argument okay which is just the angular or radian measure the argument of 1 minus 3i is equal to arc tan, or I'll show you what it looks like on the calculator, tan negative 1 of, and then we need to put in the opposite side, which is 3, over the adjacent side, which is 1. It's basically just arc tan of 3. In the calculator, what that looks like is inverse tangent of 3. Okay? So let's go to the calculator, and we'll do it both in radians and in degrees. Okay, so remember what we're trying to find. We're trying to find that angle uh, in blue, all right? So let's check and see what mode we're in now. We're in radians. Well, the one you're more comfortable with or familiar with at this point in your life is probably degrees. And so we'll just do this. We'll do second tan of three okay and hit enter and it says 71.563565 degrees well remember what that is i think it's important that we flash back to our drawing for a second that's the blue arc but you don't want the blue arc you want the red arc so remember what we did last week if you want to find this red arc, but you only know the blue arc, the whole thing has to add up to 360. So you can subtract that from 360 uh, to find the red arc. So let's go back to our calculator and just do 360 minus this, and that will give us the red arc. Okay, ready? It's 288.4349488. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that down. Uh, this red arc was 288. We need to go out to four decimal places. Four, three, four, nine. Okay, degrees. So let's flash back to our um, work surface here for a second so I can show you what this is. 288.4349 degrees. All right, well, so we have, we have uh, an angle and we have a radius, okay? So those are the two things that we need. In other words, we have a modulus, which is the radius, square root 10, and the argument is the angle, inverse tan of 3, um, which was really 360 minus inverse tan of 3, Okay, and that gave us 288.4349 degrees. Now to convert this into radians, which is what you're going to need, it, you take the angle 288.4349 and you multiply it by pi and then you divide that by 180. So you're gonna, we're actually gonna multiply it by pi out to four decimal places. So what this looks like is 288.4349 
times 3.1415, because we're going out to four decimals, and then we divide by 180. I'm going to show you something really cool here in a second. So let's let the calculator help us with that. And we'll just use the simple calculator here. Because you can see this. And you got 288.4349 minus 3.1415. Okay. And that equals 285.9. Three, two, two, nine, three, four. Divide that by 180, and you're going to get the radian measure of that arc. Okay, you're going to get the radian measure of that arc. <clears throat> okay, I just want to make sure that that was correct. You got 288.4349 times 3.1415. And then divide by 180. There, that looks better. I was a little bit concerned about that. So it's 5.0339. And we round to the nearest, um, what is that, 10 thousandths place, the fourth decimal place. And so that would topple that into a zero, which would topple this into a four. So it's going to be 5.0340. Okay. So this is. 5.0340 radians, okay? This is radians. Now, the reason I was a little bit worried is because one full rotation around the circle would be 6.28 radians, or 2 times pi. 3.14 times 2 is 6.28. So you're almost all the way around the circle, so it should be pretty close to 6.28, but not quite. And so let me show you something neat. So... Remember, we have our calculator here, and I told you that you could be in radians or degree mode. Well, let's go back to mode and change this to radian mode. Okay, let's hit second quit. Now we're in radian mode. And so first we're gonna compute the tangent of three. Now we got that in radians, and we're going to subtract that from 2 pi, which is the complete rotation around the circle. And watch this. 5.034. All right, so let's go. It's the same thing in, as we got, right? See? 5.034. So... Um, Here's how, you, here's how you use this information. So you can represent this uh, number 1 minus 3i. This is called the rectangular form. Okay, You can represent this in what's called polar form by writing its modulus, which remember was square root 10, and then put this little angle symbol and write the angle, which was 288.4349 degrees. Okay, And there's actually a third way that you can represent it, which this is called the polar form. Okay, You can also represent this in something called exponential form by writing the modulus, which is square root of 10, E raised to the power of this radian measure, I. So raised to the power of 5.0340I. And so these are all the same thing. This is just one way of writing it, the rectangular form. This is the polar form where you found the modulus and the argument. And this is the exponential form. And all of these have different uses, okay? But it's really beneficial to know how to kind of migrate back and forth between these, okay? So that's number two. I hope you really enjoyed kind of taking that deep dive. Now, for numbers three and four, we won't be doing any of that. Um, well, we could. We'll see. 
but I want to show you about uh, multiplying these. So these are multiplied using foil or box. So I'll do one of them in foil and I'll do one of them in box. Remember foil is first, outer, inner, last. Okay, so we make that little half moon shape. And so negative two, we're going to write all the steps out. Let me sharpen up the pencil since we're getting into this here. You know it's about to go down when you sharpen up the pencil. Okay. So we're going to multiply negative two times five plus outer negative two times negative three I, negative two times negative three I, plus inner, negative I times five, or just negative five I, plus last, which is negative I times negative three I, plus negative I times negative three I. Now this is very important. When you multiply, here, let's go to the calculator so we can learn the rules. Okay? You got to learn the rules if you want to play the game. So we need to, first we need to find the letter I on this calculator. So where are we going to find that? Well, if you go to math and you go over to num, well, I can't remember where, actually, I can't remember where it is. Maybe it's under... Uh, second math. No. Okay. I've got to remember where you get the letter I from. Give me just a second to remember where it is. Uh, it's probably staring me in the face. Um, where is that thing located? Oh, there it is. Okay. So it's maybe it's down here. So let's try second period. There it is. Okay. Second period. I knew it was somewhere. So when you multiply I times I, let's see what happens. You get negative one. Well, that's interesting. Okay. How about uh, negative I times negative I? Negative I times negative I. You get negative one. Hmm. So negative I times negative I equals negative one. I times I equals negative one. Um, so that's good. Now we've learned something and we're going to need that information when we're working our problems. So just remember that, that negative I times negative I equals um, negative one and I times I equals negative one. So First, we don't need that information. Negative 2 times 5, well, that's just negative 10. Negative 2 times negative 3i, you just multiply um, negative 2 times negative 3, and you get positive 6. And so that's plus 6i. And then you have minus 5i. And then you have negative i times negative 3i. Well, you could just as easily say negative i times negative i times positive 3, and you end up with negative 1. Here, this needs to be said. It's negative 1 times 3. So it's actually negative 3. All right, that's what that equals. Because negative i times negative i is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. So this is minus three. Well, we can combine like terms. We can combine these like terms and I'll put these in triangles. We can combine these like terms. So they're very much it's like working with, um, it's just like working with variables, right? So negative 10 and negative three combined together to be negative 13. Okay, notice they ask us to give our answer in rectangular form. And then we have 6 minus 5i, which is 1i, or plus i. Plus 1i, right? 
And let me just check to make sure that that is exactly right. And where did I put my problems? Hang on a second. Okay, negative 13 plus i is correct. So remember, that's the rectangular form. And so if you wanted the if you wanted to um, write this in like polar form, um, think about it like this. This is the base of the triangle, and this is the height of the triangle. All right, so you know you're going to do this. Negative 13 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared. Or we're trying to find that radius. Remember our, our table. You know, if you were to plot this on the complex plane, you'd have negative 13 on the real axis and then 1, okay, 1i one on the imaginary axis. And so what you're trying to figure out is this length. And so you make a triangle like this. It has a base of 13 and a height of 1. Okay, so that's where I'm getting 13 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared. Well, 13 squared is 169 plus 1 equals C squared. Well, that's 170 equals C squared. Square root of both sides gives us square root of 170. And let's see if we can break that down. So if I divide 170 by 2, uh, 2 goes into, that's... Um, 85, okay, and I can divide this by 5, uh, 5 goes into 8 one time with uh, 3 as a remainder, so that's 1 and then 7, 5 times 17. Well, this can't be simplified, so there's these are no repeating factors, so we're just going to say square root of 170 equals C. Okay, now remember, this is the modulus, right? So you've just found the modulus. That's this distance, all right? So we'll put the modulus here. This is our, we'll put it in orange. That's this vector right here, okay? Now, what is the argument? Well, the argument is the complete rotation counterclockwise from the origin. So if you wanted to see what that looks like, you would need a pretty big circle, given how big I drew this. Um, and I'll just quickly draw this so you can see. You actually have this whole circle here. And what you want to know is, what is this whole distance all the way over here? So you want to know this red distance here. Let me draw it. And so you're going to have to go about this. The whole distance from the beginning of the circle all the way around to the other where it touches the horizontal axis, that would be 180 degrees of rotation. So it's almost 180 degrees of rotation, but not quite. It's not quite 180 degrees of rotation. So how would you figure it out? Well, this is where that arc tangent comes into play. See, we know the height of this is 1, and we know its base is 13. And so remember, arc tan, or inverse tangent, is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so we go down here, and we want to find the argument, because these are the two things we need, the modulus and the argument. Well, the argument would be, inverse tan would be 180 degrees minus tangent uh, negative 1, so inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent, 1 over 13. All right, so doing this in degree mode will give us the degrees of this blue piece right here, okay? this little blue piece. And if we subtract that little blue piece from 180, we'll have the red piece. And so we'll do that in the calculator. 
This is uh, one of the reasons why I've been so, I've really been emphasizing the uh, calculator as a gift uh, because you guys need this thing. All right, so we're going to put in 100. Well, first we're going to change to degree mode because we're right now we're in radian mode. Okay, so let's go. Now we're in degree mode. And so we're going to type in um, 180 because that's the full rotation minus the arctan or the inverse tangent and then alpha y equals enter. And the top number is the opposite side, which is 1. That was the height. Remember, that was the um, imaginary component of the rectangular uh, uh, complex uh, number. And then 13 was the base of the triangle. And so you can just uh, do a right arrow, close this off, and then hit Enter. And it tells us 175.6012, uh, uh, or if you round to the nearest uh, 10 thousandth, it's 1.3. So I'm going to write that here. 175.6013 degrees. Okay, so let's uh, now let's compute the same exact thing, but in degree uh, in radian mode, because that's how we're going to get the exponential form. So we'll go here and we'll put this in radian mode, and we'll hit second quit, and we're just going to perform the same operation again, except I'm not going to use 180. I'm going to use pi. Okay, pi minus inverse tan of, and you can type it like this to save time, 1 over 13, it's the same exact thing, and you get 3.0648. So, or, I'm going to write this down, 3.0648, okay, radians. All right, back to our drawing board here. Okay, so we're going to write this. Now we have the argument. The argument is either of these two. But if you want to write it in, so we'll take the rectangular form that we were given or that we found, rectangular form. The rectangular form was negative uh, 13. This was the product plus um, 1i. The polar form is you take the modulus, that's a square root of 170, and then you put angle symbol, and then you write the degrees, 175.6013, and then the exponential form, These are all the forms of phasor algebra here. The exponential form would be square root of 170 e raised to the power of this radian measure i, 3.0648 i. Okay, so these are the three different forms that you can write imaginary or complex numbers in all right okay so i mean there's another form that has a, like a bunch of uh, trigonometry but these are the three forms that that i'm comfortable writing in and so uh that was number three okay so now on to number four this is really getting fun i hope you're having fun so this is number four we'll try to map out um, a space for us to actually do our work since I filled up too much of this page with number three. Okay, so for number four, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to, but this time we're going to use the box, okay, because people like the box better. The box is more fun. And so we'll just use a box. Remember, we're going to do a, this is just a two by two. So it's going to look like a square sort of 
And here we go. We have the box. And that box is cut into pieces like this. And we have one and then negative i square root three. And here we have two. And then we have two i square root three. So we're just gonna fill up this box. Two times one is two. Two times negative i square root three is just negative two i square root three. Two i square root three times one is just two i square root three. And then here's the hard part, right? Two i square root three times negative i square root three. Now we didn't do that one before. So let's go back to our calculator and see what happens when we multiply i times negative i. Okay, this is like discovering how to do it. You go to the calculator and type in second comma gives you the i times negative second comma that i. Let's see what happens. Ah, we get one. So negative i times negative i equals one. Very interesting. Okay, there's actually a reason for that, um, and I'll show you what it, what the reason is. But anyway, so let me transition back. So when we multiply this together, the i's are basically going to cancel out, and so we just have to multiply two square root three times square root three. Well, a little bit of side work here. Two square root three times square root three. Remember the i times negative i is gonna just be one. So what happens here? Well, you get two times square root three squared, which is just two times three, which is just six. Okay, so this is just six down here. That was really cool, right? 2i square root 3 times negative i square root 3 gives positive 6. What is going on? <clears throat> it's pretty cool, right? So the reason that works is because you start out with 1, and then you rotate into the imaginary plane, and you're at i. Okay, and then you rotate again, and you're at negative 1. And then you rotate again, and you're at negative i. And then you rotate again and you're back to one. Okay. So if you if you rotate, if you think about it like this, multiplying I, which is 90 degrees of rotation, times negative I will bring you all the way back to uh, one. So you you're just rotating yourself all the way back to one. Okay. So that's six. So let's bring all this together. We have two, so we have like terms here. It's almost um, like butterfly. You, you're gonna add these like terms together. Two plus six, okay, that's one pair of like terms. And then you have two i square root three and negative 2i square root 3. Well, isn't this interesting? So these appear to cancel out. So you have 2i square root 3 minus 2i square root 3. It's just 0, okay? And so it's just 2 plus 6, and that's 8. And so let's see if the answer is actually 8. Let me check that. Hopefully I did that right. Yep, it's just 8. So that actually doesn't have, there's nothing to draw because it only exists in the real number line. Okay, so if you, know, if you were to draw the imaginary and the real axis, it only exists at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It just exists right there on the horizontal real axis. Okay. And there's nothing, there's no imaginary component. So we're not rotating into the imaginary plane. We're just on the real axis. All right, so that was number four.
Now, numbers 5 and 6 should be very, very easy for us since we've already been learning about this, this idea of uh, rotating it okay, in a circle. So just take a close look at this. 1 plus i square root 3. I'm going to give you a, a real hint here. Even if you didn't understand anything I said so far, um, you can understand this. Both the real and the imaginary components of this are positive. So the only place where both x and y are positive in a coordinate plane is in um, the first quadrant. And so you know that this is going to be in the first quadrant. And so now we need to find, in order to do this, you need to find the modulus and you need to find the argument. Okay, So we these are the rectangular coordinates. 1 plus square root 3. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take 1 plus square root 3, i square root 3, and we're going to convert from rectangular to polar. And so remember that the 1 is like the base, and the square root 3 is like the height of a triangle. Okay? So that triangle is going to look something like this. Okay, and it has a base of 1 and a height of the square root of 3. And I don't think that triangle is drawn correctly at all. It needs to be drawn better. It's like the direct opposite of that. So it has a base of 1 and a height of square root 3. Okay, like this. And so if you want to find this which is the modulus okay which we've previously called like the radius or the hypotenuse you would just say this is a and this is b and this is c so you just use pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared so you have one squared plus square root three squared equals c squared well one squared is just one 1, and then square root 3 squared is just 3. So 1 plus 3 equals c squared. So 1 plus 3 is 4. So 4 equals c squared. And if you take the square root of 4, and you take the square root of c squared, you get c all by itself equals the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, so this is the modulus, which is 2. So you found part of it. So here's what you do know. Wherever this is, it's going to live on this red circle. Somewhere on this red circle. Okay. Now we know that it's going to be in quadrant one. Okay. This, by the way, this circle is all twos all the way around. We know it's going to be in quadrant one because we did our little analysis. And so now we just need to figure out what the argument is. And the way you can do that is by looking at this angle right here of this triangle, okay? So what is that angle? Well, <clears throat> if you want to know it, this is um, the modulus calculation. And the argument calculation down here, the argument calculation is to... Um, take the arc tan or tan negative 1 of the opposite side, which is the square root of 3, over the adjacent side, which is 1. So it's just arc tan of the square root of 3, but we're going to do it in degree mode because we need the degrees. So, because look at this polar coordinate thing is all in degrees. So we're going to go to our calculator. Oops, we're going to go to our calculator here. And let's fire this thing up and let's do, make sure we're in degree mode. Okay, go over to degree mode and second quit out of that. And then we'll do inverse tan or arc tangent of square root 3. Okay, hit enter. 60 degrees. Very fancy. 
So we'll put that down. We'll go ahead and just compute this in radians. Well, I'll show you how to do it by hand. Forget it. So um, let me go back here. So the argument of this complex number is 60 degrees. So remember, you form the polar coordinate, the polar form. So the rectangular form was 1 plus i square root 3. The polar form would be modulus, which is 2, angle 60. Okay. Sometimes it's written 2 comma 60 degrees, but this is 2 and 60 degrees. So what you do is go to your picture and find on this red line where it intersects with the 60 degrees. Okay. So wherever this intersects with 60 degrees is where you put your dot. And so that means that this orange dot is where this thing lives. Okay. So you would pick the answer choice with the orange dot right there. Isn't that cool? I think that's really cool. Okay, so now we're moving on to number six. Okay, so here we have a very interesting one. Now look right away, you can see that they're both positive, so they're both gonna they're it's gonna be in this first quadrant. So that's the first thing. If if this had been negative and this had been positive, it would be in quadrant two. If they were both negative, it'd be quadrant three. If this was positive, but this was negative, it'd be quadrant four. Okay. But this first quadrant's the easiest to work with. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the modulus. Okay. So we're going to take this rectangular coordinate and find the modulus. And we're going to start to abstract a little bit away from pictures here. Um, we're just going to take 3 square root 2 and 3 square root 2. That's our base and our height. So we have like a, I guess I will draw a picture. We have a triangle with a base of 3 square root 2 and a height of 3 square root 2. Now we could multiply these things together and do Pythagorean theorem and all that. But what you should think what you should think, ladies and gentlemen, is you should think about your special right triangle relationships. We have a right triangle relationship that says 1, 1, square root 2. 1, 1, square root 2. And so this whole thing is just scaled up by 3 square root 2. So if it's 1, 1, square root 2, then 3 square root 2, 3 square root 2 should be 3 square root 2 times square root 2, which is just 3 times 2, which is just 6. So this is 6. You can go through the Pythagorean theorem uh, thing and figure that out for yourself if you want. But it's, it's 6. And so the modulus is 6. What is the... Um, if the modulus is 6, what is this angle? Okay, well, this is something else that we can learn really quickly. Uh, the same angular relationship will be for 3 square root 2 and 3 square root 2 if we took the arctan of 3 square root 2 over 3 square root 2 as if we put, just put in 1 because anything over itself is 1. And so the arctangent of 1, um, well, I'll show you in angular form. Okay, so we're going to go to degree mode and then hit second mode to quit and then do arctan of 1. And that arctangent is the same thing as this inverse tangent, tan negative 1, whatever. 45 degrees, okay? And that makes sense. It's halfway between uh, 0 and 90 degrees. So... In order to write this in poet, this is going to be uh, 45 degrees. Okay, so to write it in polar form, you would write 6, 45 degrees, or you would write, if you wanted to write this, 6 angle 45 degrees. Okay, now 45 degrees multiplied by pi over 180 equals pi over 4. And so in exponential form, this would be 6e pi over 4i. 
if you're looking ahead like that. But let's just go back to this. So six, six angle 45. So we're on the six line at 45 degrees, which is right there. Okay. So this is our solution pot right there. And the coordinates of that point are six comma 45 degrees. Okay. So you would pick the one that had that on your on your homework. Okay. So now we're on to the very last page. Look, there's nothing beneath it but desk. And so it says here, if you want to do these, schedule a Zoom. Well, if you've been watching this tutorial, you don't necessarily need to schedule a Zoom. Um, we're just gonna do what we just what we've been doing. Okay. We're gonna do what we've been doing and convert this stuff into exponential form. Okay, so it kind of works better if you convert first to polar form and then to exponential form. But let's let's take a look at this. So remember that this is the base and this is the height of the triangle. So the first thing we have to do is find the modulus. The modulus. And in order to find the modulus, we take 5 square root 3 over 2 squared, this is A squared, plus B squared, which is 5 over 2 squared, and that's equal to C squared. Okay, So we have to distribute this, this squared symbol everywhere. So we have 5 squared square root 3 squared over 2 squared plus 5 squared over 2 squared equals c squared. Well, 5 squared is 25. Square root 3 squared is 3. So that's just 25 times 3 over 2 squared is 4 plus 25 over 4. We'll check this out. That's equal to C squared. Well, 25 times 3 is 75. So that's 75 over 4 plus 25 over 4, which equals C squared. And so that's 75 plus 25 is 100 over 4. Well, 100, so that equals C squared. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So this is just 25 equals C squared. And if you take the square root of both sides, voila, you get 5 equals C. So the modulus is 5. Mod is 5. Okay? So that's really important. That's part of what we need. That's the thing that goes in front of the E in the exponential form. Now we need the angle of rotation. And for this, we're going to use a calculator. Okay? So what we're going to put in, just so you know, we're going to find the argument here. This is the angle of rotation. Argument. And in order to find that, we're going to take the arctan of... First, I got to get some idea. We're going to be in quadrant one because these are both positive. We're going to be in quadrant one. So we're going to take the arc tan of opposite over adjacent. In other words, height over base. And so we're going to put five over two all over. 5 square root 3 over 2. Okay? All of that goes into the calculator. And so we'll, we're will we going to lean completely on the calculator to do that because that's too much work. Um, well, there's actually something we, we could do to greatly minimize our efforts. Um, but we'll leave it for now. And we're going to go in here, make sure we're in degree mode. Yep, we're in degree mode. And we're going to hit second tan and then do alpha y equals enter. 
And then we'll do alpha y equals enter again. Okay, so we can put 5 over 2. And then down in the denominator, we can do alpha y equals enter. And we can do uh, 5 square root 3 over 2. Okay, right arrow. Close all that off. This is pretty crazy looking, right? It just goes to 30 degrees. And so um, I think it's important that uh, we look at what we could have done to simplify this problem. So that's 30 degrees. So let me close this down and share something with you. So look at this. This is our fraction, all right? Erase this for a second. We know it's going to be 30 degrees. Oops. Dang it, I did not want to do that. That is not, I didn't want to bend the paper. It's going to get caught in the copier. Oh, well. So if you wanted to reduce this fraction very quickly, you could multiply the top and the bottom by two-fifths. I don't know if that is obvious or not, but that would cancel out the twos and the fives. And it would reduce this whole thing down to 1 over square root 3. Okay? So 1 over square root 3. If you wanted to simplify your life quite a bit, you would just do tan negative 1 of 1 over square root 3. So let's go back to the calculator real quick and make sure we didn't break the math. And let's do arctan of 1 over square root 3. Okay. Oops, I did not mean to do that. We'll close this off and hit enter. And you get 30. Okay, so we both of them give you the same angular measure, which means that we just simplified the fraction. Okay, let's get out of this. So we understand what we just found. What we just found was the argument. Okay, so the argument equals 30 degrees. Now, what is 30 degrees as in radian form? Because you remember in the argument, we have to do it in radian form. Well, this is degree form. So we just take, to get this in radians, we do 30 times pi over 180. Well, this is going to reduce down quite a bit. 30 and 180 cancel to give you 1 pi over 6. And so this just equals pi over 6. So the exponential form, the exponential form is modulus e arg in radian form i. Okay? Mod E arg I. So the mod was 5. That's 5 E. And then the argument was in, in radians was pi over 6. And then you just put the I. So this is the answer. 5 E raised to the power of pi over 6 I. That's the exponential form. The polar form was 5 angle 30 degrees, the rectangular form is this, okay? The rectangular form is this. So if you look at this, you can, you're can. you now maybe starting to see a way that you could have reduced this a little bit. Um, and I don't know, you could have multiplied the entire thing by two-fifths, right? And you would have come up with square root 3i is that wait hold on so you would have come up with let's do it it's too much fun to not do it if you multiply this whole thing by two fifths you would come up with a much simpler so you cancel the twos and you cancel all the fives so you'd what you'd simplify this down to is square root three plus i that would simplify that down it would have been a lot simpler uh, to do it that way. And it makes sense. Opposites, one over, yep. 
So that's correct. So this is an, uh, a simplified form. We didn't need to do any of this if we would have just thought to multiply the entire thing by two-fifths. Man, that's a head-scratcher. Why didn't we think to do that? Well, the teacher's an idiot. That's why. Okay. So, but we still got the answer. Now let's do this final uh, one here. All right. So remember, this is the base and this is the height. But we have a little complication. So remember... If you have the real component as positive and the imaginary component as negative, you're going to be in Q4. So we do kind of need to take a second and like plot this. And it's going to, in rectangular form, let's do, this is 1i, 2i, negative 1i, negative 2 I, and this is one, two, three. Okay, so we're at one, and then at negative square root three. Okay, well, let's figure out what square root three is so we can get some idea of what that, what that looks like. So three square root, 1.73. So like right about here is where we're at. All right. So now we need to get our rotational thing going on. Okay. So let's rotate this and figure out what it is we're trying to find. Okay. All right. So here's what we're trying to figure out. We would like to know, first of all, we want to know this, which we can figure out using Pythagorean theorem. Um, whoops. So it's this distance here, and that's the modulus, okay, or the radius of that circle. But the other thing we'd like to know is we would like to know this entire arc of rotation counterclockwise from the origin going all the way around, or not the origin, but the uh, beginning there, all the way around there. We want to know this whole angle of rotation. Okay, but the, the way we're going to have to do it is we're going to have to get this blue piece and then kind of do a 360 minus the blue piece. Okay, so how are we going to figure out the blue piece? Ow. Well, we can do it in a variety of ways. So we can make a triangle right here. Now, you got to think about this triangle for a second. So here's your reference angle, right? This is where you're looking from. And so the opposite side is 1, and the adjacent, sorry, the opposite side is the square root of 3, and the adjacent side is 1. So keep that in mind. But first, we're going to figure out the modulus. So the modulus of this thing, the modulus of this thing, is just the base is 1, so that's a squared plus 2 plus b squared equals c squared. And so let's, let's go ahead and write it all out. We're going to do 1 squared plus <clears throat> negative square root 3 squared equals c squared, all right? And c is what we want. So 1 squared is 1 plus negative 3 squared, negative square root 3 squared is just 3. And that equals c squared. Well, that nice math, huh? So 1 plus 3 is 4. So 4 equals c squared. And so if you take the square root of both sides, you get 2 equals c. So now, remember that polar coordinate notation? This is 2. This mod is 2. Okay? The mod is 2. How about the, ax how about the rotation? Well, that's called the argument. Remember that. So the argument of this, and first we're going to find it in degree form, then we'll convert to radians. So remember, it's going to be 360 degrees minus the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So square root 3 over 1. It's just the opposite of what we were doing before. 
square root 3 over 1. And remember, before it was 30 degrees. So I wonder if this is going to be 60 degrees. Hmm. We'll see. Um, so first we'll do this inverse tan of square root 3 and see what we get. Let me show the calculator here. So we'll do, we're still in degree mode. Okay. So we'll do inverse tan of square root 3. Because it's just square root 3 over 1, so we don't have to write it. It's 60 degrees. Okay. That's good. And so we knew that. We, we had a uh, prediction there anyway, that that's what it was going to be. So let's go back and write out our polar form. So the argument is 60, uh, hold on, it's not 60 degrees. 60 degrees is, is what the inverse tangent of the square root of three is. So we need to do 360 minus 60 degrees. Okay, and that's gonna give us, so we just found the blue piece was 60 degrees, we need to find the red piece. And so 360 minus 60, equals 300 degrees and 300 degrees is the argument of this complex number okay so if you want to convert 300 degrees into radians you just multiply by pi over 180 all right well we can definitely divide um first of all we can just knock out these here and then we can simplify 30 over 18 by dividing out a 3. So that gives us 10 and 6. And we can divide out a 2, and that gives us 5 and 3. So this is equal to 5 pi over 3. Radians, okay? Radians. And so if you want to write the polar form of this, you would write... 2, which is the modulus, angle 300 degrees. But if you want to write the exponential form, remember it's mod e arg i. And so you would write 2 e. And then you would write the argument in radians, which is 5 pi over 2 i. And that's the exponential form. We'll write it up here. It's 2e 5 pi over 2i. Okay, and that is the um, that is the exponential form of this imaginary number. Okay, so hey, guess what? We're done. Uh, right out an hour and 12 minutes, and so we have really taken quite a journey today. Um, through all these problems. So guys, I really hope this has been interesting to you. I hope it hasn't been terrifying. Um, and I hope you have some better idea of how all this works. Okay. Some of you, some of you like this, some of you hated it. Um, and so what I really hope is that those who liked it, I hope this fed an interest of yours. And I hope that you keep in mind I want to show you something before we sign off. I have uh, gone to the uh, National uh, Radio Astronomical Observatory. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. But this place here, you see this cup. So I, I got this sticker when I went there and I just put it on this mug. This mug didn't come from there. But you can kind of see it says Very Large Array National Radio Astronomy Observatory in New Mexico. Okay? The Very Large Array. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, um, she works there. Now, I want to show you a picture of the Very Large Array. So, like, why would you study imaginary numbers? Why would you pay attention here? Because someday you want to work at this place. Believe me, this thing is awesome. The Very Large Array. Check this out. This is the Very Large Array. Look at this. This should blow your mind. Look at that. Look at all of those. These are. This is a huge telescope. Okay, Here's what it looks like from the air. 
Here's another picture. Look at all these things. So these things are uh, receivers, okay? And so they just, they all point up at the sky in kind of a triangulated way. And um, they are able to produce astonishing um, astronomical observations that are, uh, you know, millions of times the size of any kind of optical telescope. So here it is from the, look at this. It's kind of in this Y shape and they can move these around. All of these can like move around. Um, like they look like tanks. So here's another picture. Anyway, if you want to work there, let's say very large array and then inside, let's see if we can see inside the, inside the lab inside the lab. I don't know if we're going to be able to find a picture of it. Mm, let's see. Very large array. National National Radio uh, inside. I want to look inside the lab. Let's see if we can get a picture of it inside. Nope, we're not going to we're not going to get anything. Oh, I don't think this is what it looks like. Anyway, um, it's a cool place, and I really think that if uh, if if you this is just one application, um, but you can study things like this nebula, um, or this the rep, the rep, sorry this is the uh, remnant of a supernova. Uh, you can study this if you want to um, by paying attention to imaginary numbers because that's what you can do if you learn about imaginary numbers you can go be an astronomer in new mexico among many other things all right well um guys thank you so much for paying attention i know this hasn't been easy uh this is a lot of work but you've you know if you fought through the whole thing i i hope you came out learning something that you didn't know before thanks so much <laughs>